Happy Monday, y'all. Today we're going to be learning about something a little bit different. We are going to be talking about altars and tools. So when I asked around, like, what video would y'all like to see next? I got a, quite a few <laughs> people voting for altars, but I didn't think I could do a whole video just on altars. So I figured I would go ahead and hit the whole shebang with tools and everything. Which will make sense in a minute. So, there's something that I've noticed in the more younger crowd, younger community, whatever, as far as, like, magical practice goes. And that is everybody talking about their altars, wanting to show off their altars. What do they need for their altars? And then the cute little pocket altars and everything, which is all fine and well. I'm not, like, knocking it. But the reason I wanted to talk about it is because people seem to be getting under the impression that they need an altar. But you don't. So let's talk about it. So an altar is essentially your workspace. You can have your deity figures, your tools, or whatever you, what have you, on it. But an altar is not really necessary. Because, like... Technically, you can honor your deities anywhere, and you can always build a small shrine for them, not necessarily a workspace, which seems, like, generally speaking, it's nice and all to have that representation, but at the same time, if you're actually working in your workspace, it kind of gets a little, mm, crowded, if it makes sense. So, everybody's always, like, with their altar cloths, and, and oh, I know in Wicca specifically, 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 that there's certain ideas that you need different tools, like you need an athame, you need a chalice, you need a pinnacle, or pentagram. I get them mixed up. I'm sorry. I know that's a weird thing for me to get mixed up, but I, I don't do Wicca, and I've not messed with Wicca in like 20 years, 20, 20 plus years, so I'm sorry if I don't remember. But you don't really need any of that to work, to do work. And I feel like there's like an unnecessary pressure put on people. Like, oh, you need to get this and you need to get that and whatnot. Let me explain something. I've been doing this for a very long time. I don't get tools unless I need them for specific jobs. Because it's like, let's say I want to hang some curtains. Now, I know I'm going to need some screws. I'm going to need a drill, a screwdriver hang this. I'm not going to go out and buy a table saw to hang curtains. <laughs> so, so like you don't have to buy tools if you don't need them, if you're not going to use them or at least for a long time. So this pressure that you need all these things, mm -mm, you don't need any of this stuff. But let's circle back to the altars. So an altar is your workspace where you do your work, your crafting, um, Whatever it is that you personally do. Now, the reason that I, I don't have an altar. And I've never had a need for one. Because usually, I when I do work, I either do it outside. Or I go to the place I need to do it. Or whatever it is I'm trying to impact. Like, I have a tendency to go towards to natural water sources. Depending on what it is that I'm doing. And the reason why is because it's a great place to petition. It's a great place to cleanse. Everything you need is right there. So I personally find those great places to go or even just somewhere where you can just feel the energy is richer, which is great because you want that and it gives you something that you can tap into if you need a little extra oomph. Um, plus you have to take into consideration that altars aren't specifically a witchcraft thing. They are in all manner of religions and practices and cultures and stuff like that. And they are almost exclusively just workspaces. So it's great to have an altar. I'm not knocking having an altar, but I, I don't think that it is a necessary thing. And I mean, especially like if you're more into the crafting aspect then you are the religious aspects of it, then you really don't need one. Like, really, any space where you can do your job is all you really need. Because altars are more commonly used in religious practices now. I mean, yes, they are used in witchcraft and whatnot, but 
for the grander scheme of things, they are used fairly predominantly in religions. Like, that was where we did our sacrifices. That was where we left our offerings. That was where we petitioned our gods. God, whichever religion it is that you practice. But, I mean, and if you think about it, they, um, oh gosh, what are they called? Christians, podium, mm, that's going to bother me now. Uh, I, but you get the idea. Like, technically, that's an altar. So, that's the gist of the altar thing. And I'll be honest, some of the tools, like, I know that they are used very much in, in Wicca. And I don't want to knock Wicca, but some of it is just... Like I said, it's not really necessary. Like, I have Athamaser, a good example. Athamaser used in spell work a lot. And they're also very limited in their uses. So while they are good for things, like if you're going to go out and harvest plants, assuming that you do that, it's a good tool for that. Or cutting cord and things like that, carving. But at the same time, it doesn't have to be exclusive. It's not going to give you the bang for the buck that you're wanting to get out of it because ultimately it's still just a tool and any tool that can do the job is the appropriate tool because I know some people use them for carving sigils and runes and stuff like that and I'm going to be honest with you that would probably be a lot easier with an exacto knife <laughs> I mean I, I don't know if anybody uses an exacto knife for a athame but <laughs> It'd be pretty cool, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But, but yeah, I mean, like, the, the right tool for the job is the one that's going to do it the best. And you don't need some, like, fancy double-bladed silver dagger or whatnot, which, that's another thing. If I recall correctly, they are supposed to be silver. Um, I know some people get very into the idea of wanting bone ones. Um, I don't really advocate for that for some personal reasons. I don't really use bones as tools. Um, but that's just my, my personal preference. I may explain that later. Maybe not, probably not in this video because it's really a complicated explanation. But anyway, that's just an example. Like, you don't need anything fancy. You just need a tool that's going to do the job. And like a lot of people, I'm, I will probably do a bigger video on this because one of the videos requested was one on scrying. So I will expand on this one later. But a lot of people get really hung up on the mirrors. And I have a little bit of issues with the mirrors. Okay, so to be clear... People will use mirrors for like scrying, remote viewing, the same way that you would with a crystal ball or whatever. The reason that I don't like people using mirrors is because mirrors act as doors and gateways. And they're not a one-way mirror, if you get my meaning. Because even though you can see things, other things can see you too. And certain things, like some people are very... <sighs> I don't know. I don't know if it's like an edgy thing or like a trendy thing or whatever, but everybody really wants to get into the, like the whole black mirror thing. Let me be very clear on this. Black mirrors are used for more advanced practitioners, people that are very stable in themselves. They are good for shadow work, but they are very intense when it comes to shadow work. It's not like doing normal shadow work and where you are going to see bits and pieces of the ugly side of yourself. This is a very intense way of doing it. And like if you were going to consider, and I'm not trying to make light of this, but if you were going to consider shadow work being the, the shallow end of learning to swim, then a black mirror is going to be the polar plunge. <laughs> like it's a lot more intense and it's something that you need to work up to. It's not something that you just want to jump in the deep end with. So, I mean, that's another thing. And, and mirrors in general are just dangerous. If you're doing magical work and you're not very 
if you don't have some real time in. And when I say real time in, I mean like over five years in. Because five years is kind of like the tipping point in my eyes from going from a beginner level to an intermediate kind of level where you've got the basics and you know how to take care of yourself. But yeah, so I am coming up on my time frame in about two minutes. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out why my, my times are cutting down. I've done memory dumps and all that. But I hope y'all liked my little brief explanation on tools, what you need, what you don't need, why you don't need them, and the best way to work around it. I mean, your craft is your craft. Do as you want. Get whatever you want if you feel the need to do so. But don't feel like you have to, that it is necessary to progress because it's not. You can get years in and never need this stuff. It really just depends on your style of practice and what it is that you're wanting to learn. But yeah, I've got about a minute left. So as always, if you like the video, hit me a like. If you like my channel and you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe. Also, be sure to check out the Instagram. And we're also on TikTok now, which was a long time coming and I was very fighting it tooth and nail. But... I'm trying to put the more funny, dramatic stuff on that. But yeah, go go hit us a follow. Go hit us a subscribe. Um, feel free to leave comments, which I fixed, by the way. My YouTube filters were hurting that pretty bad. But yeah, drop comments. You can make video requests. You can ask questions. You can DM if you want. All of my stuff is always open. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we will see you next Monday. this thing.